Good. So ideally, we are going to look at uh, network security. Uh, you can call it a network security, introduction to network security, of course, uh, some network security concepts. And we are just going to look at uh, the uh, various building blocks of network security. So I hope we have an understanding of what computer networks have and basically how to secure this particular network is the main objective. So this particular uh, unit, we won't really dig deep into understanding the various uh, devices of the network. We're just sim simply going to use those particular devices uh, to illustrate how we can perform some security. So the basics of network is very, very uh, important in understanding this particular a unit. So ideally, a network security uh, involves a different paradigms or dimension, right? So we can always talk about uh, cyber security. Uh, we can also introduce application security. We can introduce uh, the network security itself, right? And how we can at least understand how to uh, secure the various parts of the network. So we are reminded of the benefits of networks or how we can connect a uh, network. And the main uh, importance of having the computers being networked together is for communication purposes. And since we have the various ways of communicating between different devices, then it poses a challenge or reasons as to why we need to secure different parts of the network. As a user, you have the responsibility uh, to offer this security mechanism, right? Of course, we have different parts of the network, such as the media, the software, uh, the hardware that needs to be uh, secured. So we're going to look at all these, right? The threats, the attacks to the network, how we can identify them, categorize them and eventually mitigate them, right? So we are really not going to dive deep into understanding all these uh, network security mechanisms or measures, but we are going to highlight uh, the fundamentals. So as you can see from the diagram, we have different dimensions of network security, right? Or the threats come from different uh, areas. We can have threats from malwares, we can have threats from even users themselves, right? So we need to understand how to uh, handle that. So ideally, in a nutshell, we are going to look at uh, what is security? Ideally, what is security? Why do we need that particular security with respect uh, to network? And of course, uh, who is vulnerable in this particular uh, manner? And we are going to look at, just to mention, but a few, some common security attacks and countermeasures. Now, this particular discussion is going to escalate in our subsequent uh, classes so that we reinforce the understanding. Uh, like the security attack known as the TCP, uh, this one is a very wide topic that we need to understand. Maybe we can use it as one of our practical projects and see how we can stop these kind of attacks uh, based on some tools that are available that we're going to look at when you're talking about the network uh, tools. So uh, we also have different dimensions of this particular security. So we have cyber security, as I mentioned. We have computer security. We have network security. And we have internet security. Now, you realize that the main focus of our discussion is going to be network security. And we realize that other angles of security will rely on network security. Like computers need to be connected to the network, right? We need to have a well secured network uh, for us to be able to enjoy uh, uh, surfing the internet or browsing, right? So we are going to look at measures or our measures of how to protect data, especially during transmission. So we have the sender on one end and the receiver on one end. The sender could be sending some email or they could be sending some sensitive information 
uh, to the recipient. So in between, are we able to secure the network? It could be intranet, it could be extranet, it could be the internet as a whole, so that the data that is sent maintains its, its integrity all the way, right? So we're also going to look at the security model to be able to understand how these uh, kind of uh, security dimensions are applied. Talk about confidentiality, availability, and so on. So our main focus is going to be network uh, security. So just to understand in broad perspective, uh, if you look at the dictionary.com, security, even you as an individual, <laughs> you need to be secure uh, to actually perform the activities that you are that you are undertaking, right? You need to ensure that when you're in your house at night, your, the door is locked, right? And of course, if you are sleeping also, you need to have some kind of alarm systems, uh, CCTVs, just to ensure that you have some sense of security or safety, right? So we can holistically look at security as freedom from risk or danger. So put it in the network concept. How are we going to be uh, to handle this kind of security? How are we going to be safe when using our networks? Are we going to be free from risks uh, like malware, like hackers, and so on, right? Uh, of course, security also gives us the other angle, freedom from doubt. For instance, if you're a network administrator and you have been tasked to secure the network, Right? Are you going to have that confidence that this particular network is secure? Do you have the right VPN uh, implemented? Do you have the right access control lists implemented? Are your routers secure? So that you are free from this particular doubt and fear, right? And of course, when this is implemented, it's going to, it's going to give you a sense of security, of safety, right? You can have uh, some well set out procedure like policies, right? That you can adopt. Yeah, you can have you can set some standards like users that users need to follow, right? Or, or how hardware and net and softwares are need to be used. So these are some of the measures that needs to be adopted just to have some sense or surety that you are are secure. So why do you need this? Uh, security, uh, specifically the network security. Uh, we need it to protect vital data while allowing others to access, right? Now, looking at the fundamentals of why we need a network, right? People use networks for communication, sharing sensitive information, uh, so on and so forth. So there are a lot that happens within a network. So we need to provide uh, to protect that vital uh, information. We also don't need any Tom, Dick, and Harry to access our network. So we need to provide some strong authentication. We have different forms of uh, authentication mechanisms that you can always uh, provide. Uh, the common one is ensuring that users have uh, the right usernames and uh, passwords. Of course, we have other options, uh, such as biometric options, ensuring that maybe people use their fingertip, uh, our finger, tips for identification, we can also use our other forms. And of course, we have also those particular uh, access cards, right? We are going to maybe uh, mention these forms of security measures that can put in place, right? And this should guarantee availability of resources, but only availability of resources. We need a security that's going to ensure that wherever we store, Wherever we send data across the network, it's going to be available, not only in transit, but where it is actually uh, stored, right? Uh -huh. I don't know why I'm going on and off, uh, but can you hear me now? Um, yes. All right. I don't know why I'm on and off. Maybe. 
All right. Uh, so we need to guarantee not only availability, but some form of confidentiality and integrity uh, to our resources, right? And uh, sorry, if I'm on and off, kindly just bear, I'm recording this, I'll be sharing it. Sorry for that. It could be, could be network, internet issues. Now, maybe I could ask a question here. If you look at this particular diagram, uh, this diagram uh, gives us some kind of uh, understanding of how important a network uh, or how, how important a secure network is. So from this diagram, we see uh, two people communicating, right? And of course, there's the bad guy that listens to this communication. So Alice is communicating to the school nurse, I believe so, giving very sensitive records, I believe. I can see credit card there. I hope you can also be able to see that, right? So these are very sensitive data. But when this particular data is being transmitted, also we have uh, people who are not of the good intention. Uh, they have malicious uh, reasons uh, to connect this particular uh, internet so that they can tap into this confidential uh, information. Now, apart from this, a credit card because this is a sensitive data. Any other sensitive data that might be of interest to a bad guy? Mm -hmm. Any other form of sensitive data? Or any other type of data that can attract uh, hackers? Examples apart from the credit card information. Um, the the hackers will be interested in the patient's medical records, if they had the intent to harm their patient. Okay, okay, okay. All right. So, uh, that. Sorry, I was just checking some. So that could be another reason. But ap apart from what you are seeing, apart from the sensitive data here, what else? What are some of the things that attracts uh, hackers or bad guys? What are some of the interesting data or information yeah, that could attract hackers into uh, snooping or sniffing into what is being transmitted? Any other form? Um, could we say like to sell data mm -hmm. off to other interested parties? Okay. Okay, to sell data. Uh -huh, good. So I think uh, when you're looking at maybe the malicious intentions of these uh, people will uh, dive deep because it uh, boils down maybe to financial information and such kind of a thing. So if you are a student, you see also there are people who are interested in uh, tapping into student data. So what kind of data are those ones? So those are things that we really need to uh, put into consideration. So can you think of ways a bad guy can use the data he obtains to cause harm or harm? give examples and reasons. Uh -huh. Any example? We have Alan, Alan Masharia, can you say something? Any reason as to why <laughs> a bad guy can be interested in a particular data? Uh, um, to sell it to uh, willing buyers. Okay, which data is this? Uh -huh. And okay, reason is to sell it. And which data is this, or what? Say if say if they know there's a prominent person using, uh, uh, say a Facebook account which may have, have uh, 
special information they may have discussed with someone else. People may uh, use such information to sell to, you know, mm -hmm. to other people. So from where you are seated or where you are, can you think of what ways or means you can do to prevent this bad guy from executing that? Um, using firewalls. Good, we can use uh, firewalls. Mm -hmm. Any other way? Strong passwords. <laughs> of course, you can use strong authentication. Right, so uh, those are just to name but a few, but we are going to look at others as we proceed. Now, one way that you can stop these bad guys from accessing this sensitive information is the concept of cryptography. This is a whole topic on its own. Uh, since we are looking at the concepts, it's good to ac actually bring it forth so that you understand it. Yeah. Most systems or most uh, people send their data in plain text. So this is something that hackers really like, right? So it's very, very important uh, to be able to convert this particular text, right? Uh, by using the cryptography uh, technique. So the cryptography simply means uh, converting this message into a secret call, a code normally referred to as the cipher text. So we are going to do to look at how to achieve this, right? And the two ways of achieving this from cipher plane and plane to cipher is what we refer to as encryption and a decryption, right? So we have seen that people, two people communicate most and hackers or bad guys are always there to steal the information. So it's very important that the sender encrypts this particular information before transmitting it. And also the end user or rather the receiver or recipient, I should be able to decrypt this particular information. So there are some set of keys uh, that they need to share so that at least the bad people cannot be able to see what is being uh, transmitted. So there's this diagram showing ideally the concept. Yeah. So just looking at the previous uh, people who are communicating, we had Alice, right? So Alice wants to send some uh, data online. So they are, uh, she has to encrypt this uh, into Cypher. And of course, it has to be decrypted. So the sending personnel or application need to share that key with the person who is going to uh, be able to receive this particular resource. So same as the previous, encrypting and decrypting. So ideally, this one stops the hackers, right, into reading this particular information, what we refer to as eavesdropping dropping and collecting this uh, confidential information, right? So this encryption is not enough. We need to reinforce it. Otherwise, if there are some patterns that are used, uh, the hackers can as well crack that, right? So we're going to look at how to have a very uh, improved and effective uh, keys within when you're encrypting and decrypting. So there's an example here, uh, for instance, where on how we can pull out at this particular keys. This, this di diagram here, the out, outer wheel shows the plain text and the inner wheel shows uh, the text that has already been encrypted. So for example, you are having a meeting. There's an example here at a restaurant. So uh, we are asking which one. So it's, for example, golden coral. So you have to encrypt this one. You can see after it has been encrypted, the key is number four. And it needs to be decrypted, right? So every time we are transmitting, 
uh, data within the network uh, uh, media, any media for that matter, it could be wirelessly or through wired communication. Uh, this needs to be uh, encrypted. So another example, which I just came across, like for example, there's, uh, of course, even physically, uh, looking at a, phys a physical approach, right? So here, maybe you can read for us, uh, so that I get to understand whether you can hear me. Uh, Mark, Mark can read for us the problem. Pardon? Uh -huh. Just read for us this problem. The art, uh, a problem. The art museum in Bryan, Texas wants to transport a very valuable painting of Mona Lisa to the White House in Washington, D.C. for an art exhibition scheduled for Halloween Day. The director must communicate to the Washington DC office the, the details for transporting the painting. Date and time of flight arrival, name of airline and airport of arrival, name of courier. So you can see, thanks. You can see this is very uh, sensitive information, date and time of flight arrival. So on the other hand, uh, they need to think about something, right? Okay, of course, there's a problem here. So there's a secret that is going to be very, very uh, important that it should be sealed for that matter. So, however, the museum museum directors learned that there's a, a group of robbers, old casters that want to intercept and steal the painting while in transit. So we need to encrypt this particular uh, information so that the casters cannot easily target the pain. So this is just a kind of um, uh, of understanding how also network or data is being transmitted online. So ideally, we can have these casters online. That is what I'm trying to, uh, to bring across. These casters are very many online who are just there seeing what people are transmitting. So if they look at the data that is being transmitted and for instance, I find that it is plain text, and then they can always steal it and cause uh, malicious damage, right? So ideally that's when you find that someone is uh, saying that they are online banking systems were hacked and so on. So is it only the, the Mona Lisa secret option? Who all else is a vulnerable? Financial institutions. Actually, they are the most targeted, right? The transactions that are being made by these particular financial systems are very vulnerable. So very, very strong systems and secure systems need to be put in place. Uh, the internet service providers, maybe at this point I could have asked you how vulnerable they are, right? Internet service providers, they root and they are the center point of how communication happens from multiple organizations. Remember, people subscribe to these ISPs. So they contain a lot of important uh, IP addresses. If hackers get, they can always uh, pause as the ISPs and hack into the system. Uh, pharmaceutical companies, of course, government, uh, contractors, a multinational corporation, right? And I believe we have very many, even education sector, right? Even transport, yeah? So almost every industry or institution is vulnerable and they can always uh, be the main target when using uh, networks. So after all said and done, <laughs> of course, we need to have some benefits, right? Of using or securing this particular network. This is just in a summary form, but we have additional benefits. Maybe uh, you can help me answering them. Of course, when you have a secure network, we can protect our businesses and organization from these malicious softwares, right? Uh, 
uh, we need to have those uh, security mechanisms put in place so that hackers don't use these malicious softwares to cause harm, right? Like when you are accessing a particular website, is it secure or is it full of malwares? The main benefit of having network security also is to protect end users, right? So how best can you protect the end users? Because you've already seen that the end target is the user, your financial information. They go to your bank, steal that money. If it is a patient record, they use it for some reason, as you've mentioned, sell it. So it's our responsibility to ensure that our network provides protection uh, to the end users. We also need to give good data protection, right? Now, any organization thrives well when their data is not tampered. If you have an organization, for instance, a bank, who has a bad reputation of being hacked every time and then and losing their clients uh, data to other people and then that is not a good uh, thing so we need to have a way so that we benefit from network security we also need to have a way of recovering from network breaches or incidences that may occur uh, like for example if you're reinforcing network uh, security as a network administrator how fast can you be able to recover, right? For instance, from a hacking attempt, right? Or what are some of the measures that you're going to put in place so that the normal business operation are proceed as usual as you rectify the mess that other people have caused? So recovering time here is very, very important and you're going to look at the network defense approaches that you need to put in place in order to uh, recover in time. And of course, uh, as I've said, it prevents unauthorized users. Uh, not only unauthorized users, but also we have elements of application programs or programs that use our resources without the proper authorization. Uh, just like the malwares, yeah? So also these, that those programs that are crippled into our networks and utilize our resources, and like internet, for instance, yeah? So we have to stop them, and so on. Any other benefits that you might think of, uh, good people? Mm -hmm. Masharia, any other benefits that comes from the network security? Um, I think uh, we've exhausted them. <laughs> really? Uh, okay, you, you need to think about others. I think there are quite a number. But yes, okay. these are summary. These are summary uh, of them. So those are the benefits, right? Going ahead, we are going to meet very many terminologies. Also, I've not exhausted them, but as we proceed, there are very many, right? Uh, like an authorized access, right? This is something that as you uh, present your finding, you need to use these particular terms. Yeah? So these are people don't have the right credentials to access uh, our resources, for instance. So it could be a server, right? We also have the hacker. <laughs> uh, hacker, of course, this is a familiar term, right? Uh, kindly, note that we also have the, the good and the bad hacker. We have the ethical hackers who really tries to uh, undo what these bad hackers have done. So we need to be very specific here. So we are talking about the illegal hacker. Right? We also have the threat. Yeah, We are going to have another topic of the network uh, threats and attacks. Right? So a threat is an action or event that might compromise. Of course, threat and attack always uh, goes hand in hand. So attack here is actually utilizing uh, 
uh, thoroughly utilizing that particular uh, trait. Like you get into a compound and you find that it's not, there's no security guards. Okay, I've, I've seen there's a drop of connection there. So you'll find that if you go to a compound, you know, there's no security guard and maybe there's a, a lab there that has some kind of mainframe uh, computers. So that is a threat. So because there's no any alarm, any person uh, to stop you from. And then if you get access to that lab, then you can create an attack. Yeah. So it's an author to the system, right? Uh, of course, the system could be containing uh, even the application, someone can use even the financial application or even the HR system. Uh, we have heard of uh, a situation whereby employees are uh, get salary increment without the authorization of the HR manager. Yeah, so <laughs> an attack was performed there and someone just wrote a script to increment everyone's salary. So these are some of the things that we need to understand vulnerability and this is what you are going to really uh, work on to ensure that we handle this vulnerability hackers like weak systems right so they normally peep and look at any uh, vulnerable or any weak place or loopholes for that matter that they can be able to uh, utilize so if your network is weak, that means it has loopholes, then hackers can be able to utilize those particular loopholes and maybe cause some harm. So where do we find this vulnerability? Of course, when you're designing or implementing your network. Yeah? If, you have, if you don't have like a well-implemented network, when you talk about well implemented networks such as uh, providing the right authentication measures, access control list, all these, right, will expose your network. So, in essence, vulnerability is a weakness or design a problem, right? And they can always utilize it. Uh, I think I might be omitting a very important component of network security, and that one is the network operating system, right? With the time we are going to look at these uh, maybe softwares and how we can use them to enforce network security, right? So of course also if you are, if you don't have the right uh, secured network operating system, that's where you're going to find a lot of uh, hackers utilizing those particular loopholes or the design flows in software uh, development. Yeah. So if you, ha you happen to uh, use a weak or a vulnerable network operating system, uh, then that one will be calling bad guys on. And sometimes I normally have a lot of discussion around this. So which one is the best uh, network operating system, maybe for your server? <laughs> is it from the Windows or is it from the open source uh, Linux, right? Anyway, ensure that your systems are not vulnerable. Antiviruses, anti malwares of course, that is very important, right? These are the end user parameters that they use to protect themselves, right? Uh, social engineering occurs in multiple factors. People can call you if the system is not right. If they hack into the system and find some leading information. They can always call your employees or they can always use that information, right? Uh, to sell it to the other uh, people or other organization or competitors for that matter, right? So this is very, very important for us to understand because it's a more, more of social way of uh, coming up or uh, getting information from uh, users but ideally they can also use the systems that are available. Our viruses, of course, you know these ones, uh, part of the malicious software that uh, we need to mention. I think I'm going to talk about it later on. Firewall, 
uh, as you have indicated, firewall is very, very important, right? Uh, these are both hardware and softwares that you can always uh, implement for us to ensure that we have stable traffic. We are going to look at this just in a few. Now, we can't really proceed with understanding the network uh, security concept without looking at the basic security. Uh, we mentioned that we have confidentiality. Uh, sorry, if I'm breaking, I think it's because of also, I like talking very fast at some point. But we can also look at confidentiality, integrity, and availability. These are three parameters that if compromised, then there is an unsuccessful attack. Right? Confidentiality of data should be well maintained. If there's a breach to this, then the confidential information can always be leaked to unauthorized users. So we should ensure that our systems protect our data and all the network systems. And of course, integrity, all these we are going to look at as we proceed. So integrity is a matter of ensuring that the resources that we share online are not tampered with. More so, the data that is being transmitted or sent online should remain unchanged from the senders until the, uh, the recipient receives it. So, for example, we have looked at how the bad guy can be able to uh, capture the data and alter it. So, when it the bad guy alters the data that is being transmitted, then we say integrity has been compromised. Uh, the other side is the availability, right? Availability is a way of ensuring that our resources are available 24 or seven, <laughs> yeah? That means if you have a printer, server, if you have a web server, everyone should be able to print without any issues. Like, I can't be able to access my the printer, that one should not, should not be the case. If they cannot be able to access the printer, then we need to find out why. Remember, a printer a provides also a, a loophole where uh, hackers can use the IP address for the printer or snoop into what is being printed. Yeah, whatever information is within the print, uh, within the spool or pool of where those particular information, they can always uh, drop into that. So if it's not available, we should ask ourselves why. We have web servers, for example, right? If we can't access, access the website, we need to find out why can't we access. So that is availability. So if these particular key resources are not available, then uh, the availability is compromised. So take note of these three parameters. We are really going to look at them uh, in detail as we proceed. Then there's a ripple effect, or rather uh, what we refer to as the, the mirror yeah, of these three. So of course, uh, confidentiality, we have you can always have privacy issues. Uh, the market perception. Market perception is after the system has been compromised, let's say confidentiality, how are people going to look at this particular organization, right? If it is a bank, for instance, let's say Bank X, I keep on having issues with their system. Then the client to Bank X will start having a negative perception towards the bank and they might move uh, to a different uh, bank. So ideally this affects uh, the perception. But of course we need to have uh, the physical security of our systems, right? So privacy also, this critical data based on the confidentiality should not be released uh, to the wrong people. And we're going to see how to uh, try to reinforce this particular confidentiality, integrity, and availability. I think up to now, if someone asks you, 
maybe what are some of the measures that you can put in place to ensure that confidentiality has been uh, realized in a network? You can at least mention one or two availability and of course uh, integrity. So this is how the end result or of this particular uh, what we have discussed so far, right? If you have a vulnerable system, you have said that this is the weakest point or the weaknesses of the system that can be exploited. So if a system is vulnerable and the threat is there, I gave an example of where you can have computers that maybe don't have strong password and the person maybe physically come to the compound or rather is available online and there's no firewall, for instance. So that's a threat. So that system is vulnerable. Then, there and then, there'll be a successful attack, right? So with the understanding of network security, also it will reach a point where we have to control what we refer to as reducing the impact that the attack may cause. And that's where we looked at the response time to recovery, right? So if there's an attack, for example, to the network of organization, what are some of the control measures that you can put in place to prevent further escalation of this kind of attack? Let's say two or three users complain that they can't access email. So that should worry us. So what we need to do is go to check on the email server, for instance, right? If there are unauthorized users who might be blocking or using other people's uh, emails to communicate, right? So control mechanisms come in different ways. It could be from the hardware perspective, having the firewall, from the software perspective, having the race the antiviruses, or even some kind of security patches just to reduce uh, the impact. So also take note of this security model scenario. It helps us understand how we can implement our network security. You can't implement a particular security if you don't understand, for example, the systems, which software is running on your network which hardware is running on your network? Are the users well trained to know that this is a malicious software, this is, and so on. So it, it, network security is not just about networks as per se. It cuts across a different parts, but you are really going to uh, just focus on the network security. So vulnerabilities, as I mentioned, uh, these are can be as a result of poor design of hardware and software, right? Poor implementation of networks, right? Where you don't configure, right? So, for example, when, when you're authorizing users to access resources in your network, what kind of uh, privileges do you give the users? Because you might give users the wrong privileges that they can misuse, right? So those are just examples of poor implementation. You need also to have a poor management, a strong management plan. This plan could be as simple as having at the right network security policy, right? So we can't really operate without documentation or understanding how things run. We need to understand like organization X needs to do this, organization Y needs to do this, right? If there's, for example, an intruder, do we have the right intrusion detection system, right? That can give us some kind of alert, yeah, without uh, compromising the system. Any questions so far? Any question?
is the is the difference between an OS and the network operating system. Uh huh. Is there a difference between an OS and network operating uh, system? Is that the question? Kindly, kindly. I don't know whether so what is the difference between the two. Okay. Uh, is it, Mark, you are asking what's the difference between OS and network operating, yes. isn't it? Yes. Okay. Okay. Ideally, there's no big, uh, there's no big difference. But yes, as we look at the differences, it is clear that a network operating system is an example of an operating <laughs> system, right? So we have uh, we have two categories of operating systems that you can always implement in a network. We have client operating system. That one, those are the softwares or operating system that resides within the end user computers or computing devices for that matter. Then we have network operating system that resides within the servers. Like let's say, for example, if you have a, a communication server, for example, you have to have a network operating system. So network operating system ideally are implemented within the servers. So they have a lot of uh, capabilities and uh, of course they have a ways of implementing security mechanism, right? So yes, I think at some point we're going to look at a network operating system and their role in ensuring that you have a secure network. I don't know whether you are answered. Yes, 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 I've uh, gotten the picture. Yeah, okay. So going forward, we still have, uh, of course we have, uh, uh, we have a whole load of uh, concepts that we need to understand as far as network security is concerned. We can't really exhaust them. But as time goes by, we are going to be bringing on board one or two and discuss them. Anyway, talking about vulnerability, since this is the thorn, right? This is why we need to secure the system for that matter. So we have physical vulnerabilities. Uh -huh. Any example of an environment that we can have uh, physical vulnerabilities or give an example kindly? Uh -huh. Any example of physical vulnerability? Just uh, an example. Um, unauthorized uh, access to computers. Unauthorized access physical. to uh, physical good. Then we have hardware and software. Of course, uh, we have seen uh, we have seen uh, design flaws, right? If our hardware are not properly designed and even software, uh, for instance. We have developers who quickly rush to complete a particular software development task. So if they don't follow the right development process, then they can be design flaws, right? Like for example, development of database systems, that is where vulnerability comes in. Now, the main area where we have been talking about is during transmission vulnerabilities, yeah? ability of the hackers to intercept the data in transit, right? So this is the key vulnerability that you're going to be focused on so that the sender ultimately sends that particular data without in, any interference. And more so, we are going to maintain the confidentiality, integrate, integrity and availability. Ourselves, users, we are vulnerable. Yeah, And I think everything starts from the human perspective, right? 
we are told follow this procedure to ensure that we have secure uh, network or secure ap application or secure computers. We don't follow that. Yeah. Don't use uh, this particular websites, right? Or use strong passwords. So human are vulnerable. And we can't really talk about network security if we don't reinforce uh, humans or users. So Tara training to the end user is very, very important so that we reduce vulnerability. So to implement a secure network, we need users to understand their role towards achieving the same, right? So these are some of the vulnerability threats is another angle that you're going to look at, right? So as you can see, these are anything that disrupts the normal operation or functioning of a system, more so the integrity availability of this particular network or system. So we have different categories of threats. So of course, there are those ones that you can't handle, forget about them, but you can do something anyway. <laughs> we have unintentional threats. We are more so interested in these intentional threats. Yeah. Because the people who use malicious means to interfere sorry, uh see there's a drop of there. So the people who use a different uh, different ways or malicious ways to interfere with our network operations, then we need to see a way of dealing with them. So international threats are things that we need to guard, right? Because we have the hackers who intentionally cause harm or hack into our systems because of different reasons. As you have mentioned, they can hack the system because of financial gain, right? We need to check out that. They can hack the system because of fun, yeah? You know, some people just say that, okay, let me just test my skills and see how I'm going to bring down this. Uh, so malicious ways, these are very intentional. So we need to ensure that we thwart their malicious intentions, right? So they can use mal malicious software, for example, yeah, to achieve the same, right? So we have also some, um, we also have some concepts that we need to understand when it comes to attack, right? So we have looked, uh, in our previous understanding, you have seen that security attack are uh, any action or any action that compromises the security of information. So what should we do? We need to provide the right security mechanism. So we need to design our systems to detect, to be able to prevent, and possibly recover from any form of security attack. So that's very, very important. And of course, we have security service. Yeah. Uh, in this cloud computing understanding, we normally have security <laughs> as a service, right? So security service allows us to boost our systems in ensuring that the applications that resides uh, within the network environment or our local area network are authorized, right? So the service here is going to ensure that at least we protect our system. So we can always implement these different services based on the applications that we have. So if you have a database, it should have a database security service, right? That boosts that particular uh, security of that particular application and so on. So they just enhance it, yeah? they boost, in other words, uh, the security. So we have different forms of attacks based on our understanding of uh, the CIA or the TRAD, that is confidential integrity and availability. So a gentleman, we all 
want a secure network that provides a normal flow of data. So the first diagram, you can always uh, depict uh, the kind of uh, uh, communication pattern that we would wish to have. Uh, but since we have other forms of atoms, this is not no, the normal way. Things can change. Uh, like this, there could be some interruption, as you can see, uh, the sender, yeah, uh, and the receiver cannot communicate. So that means availability has been compromised, or rather the resource cannot be accessed uh, due to things such as denial of service data, right? Then we have interception of the, uh, of the data in transit. So someone snoops, snips uh, into that data, gets the content of that information. Yeah. So the confidentiality, you can see, is compromised. And of course, they'll go ahead and modify, right? Uh, this is now the real attack, yeah? a successful attack, because uh, the information that they use from interception is what they are going to use to mod uh, modify uh, this particular uh, data. So when you send a password or you send a sensitive information, the end recipient is going to get a different, maybe give, give them a different address so that next time they are going to communicate, they won't communicate to the original sender but they're channeling their communication uh, to a different person, which is captured under fabrication, right? So all these are forms of attacks or forms of uh -huh, sorry, all these are forms of a network attacks that you can always uh, uh, come across. So it's our responsibility to understand how to avoid interruption, interception, modification, and so on. Uh, further still, we have the, the main two categories of attacks, the passive and active. From these diagrams, a passive attacks happen, especially when the interception occurs, an active happens, after that, like modification, fabrication. So then what is uh, passive? Passive is monitoring of the system. Yeah? Uh, it's dropping and collecting the vital information. So once the bad guys or the hackers have gotten the uh, information that they want, they now spring into action, what we refer to as the active atom, right? So before you realize, someone sends you a request on the social media platform, or you see, uh, looking at maybe the Active Directory, you see that uh, the user, or there's a user that actually is not part of the active users that are there, right? So that particular address is just there to collect information. Then later on, you realize that now this particular user logs in and accesses uh, vital parts of the network. So they can be able to modify the information and that is what we refer to as the active attack. So there are a lot of ways that these ones can be achieved, like the denial of service. You can't really access the much needed resource. It could be a printer, it could be a file, right? Because of these forms of active attacks. Now, there's a sample here of the model that we have been talking about. You can see it's just the same one. Sender and receive, receiver, recipient. In between, <laughs> there are a lot of things that occurs. So we have the trusted parties that communicate, right? So they share secret information. So there's a tunnel here. And during this transmission, as you can see, we have opponent. Opponent means 
the guys that are also interested in this kind of communication, right? So we need to ensure that we have some security mechanisms. Of course, you have already looked at them on how we can transmit data securely within the transmission media uh, or information channel that is provided. So this is the model that we are going to be looking at to ensure that we secure our network. So how will this model guide us? Because you have already looked at there's a message, secret information that is being passed. We need to secure it. Their opponents who are also eager to find out this, uh, what, are, what is being uh, transmitted. And of course, we have the recipient who anticipates to receive the data as it was uh, sent. So one, this design, our model requires us to design a suitable algorithm uh, for encrypting and decrypting. Yeah? to generate the secret information keys that the sender and the user and the recipient are going to uh, share. Uh, develop some methods uh, to distribute this shared in information or uh, keys without the interception of the opponent. And communication cannot happen without protocols, right? So we need to have secure protocols that will help us move data from one point to the other. So ideally here, as a network security student, I expect you to understand the various uh, protocols. I'm um, also the protocols that enable data transmission. Talk about the TCP, IP, uh, UDP, and so on. HTTP, right? When you're downloading files, FTP, yeah. And of course, the secure shell, right? So all these are protocols that will enable us secure our data in transit. I think we, are, we have a whole topic about this, right? We are going to look at them. Uh, we need this protocol specifically when using email, yeah, email communication and communication within the website. Remember, people are going to be doing I want to refer to as um, uh, sorry for that. People are going to be doing transactions online, so using their credit card. So we need a secure website. How do we achieve that? Right. So this model enables us have a firm understanding of the crucial parameters that will help us or impose our security. Now, not only do we need this model to secure the data in transit, but even at the tail end, right? So you can see there is a gatekeeper there. So at the tail end of the, uh, when the user is using this particular uh, computer, right? What are some of the security parameters that you can put in place, right? So you can see, we can prevent users using physical security. We can use also some softwares uh, to stop the malwares from attacking us. And of course, the different programs that are running different processes. So we need to implement various security control mechanisms from the sender side at the middle of communication and of course, towards at the end of our communication. And later still, you're going to look at the various methods of defense. One, we have seen the encryption is very, very important. A software control mechanism using the right services is very important because we need to have hardware controls. I would say that we have different security me uh, mechanisms or measurements that you can put in place, yeah, like hardware controls. Policies. And I think one of the uh, one of our assignments will be about policies. Yeah? We need to have to draft a very nice network security policy uh, for a given organization. So think about it. So we need to have some policies in place uh, that's going to help us 
manage our network very, very effectively. If an organization operates without a, without a policy, uh, then chances are there's some kind of disorganization. And of course, physical controls, talk about the locks, and so on and so forth. So what are the, some of the common security attacks and their countermeasures? Uh, ideally, you've already looked at the various forms of attacks. So how do we counter? Right. Like for example, if someone is finding a way into the network, give them the firewall. If someone is trying to ex exploit uh, the system using software bugs, give them some kind of detection system. If denial of service attack is, uh, has been witnessed, do some ingress filtering. Ingress filtering is actually related to the TCP attack. Yeah? So we can always filter or drop, ingress filtering means dropping packets that have been affected or infected by the codes from the hacker side. Uh, if someone is trying to do the TCP hacking, and this protocol actually is the most common one that is being compromised, the TCP uh, transmission, a control protocol, right? So use the security, IP security. If there's a lot of packet sniffing, let's secure a system using these uh, encrypted protocols, right? Secure, so, uh, secure set, a shell, secure uh, socket layer, and of course, HTTP that is secure. From the user end, let's educate them because uh, we just have some social problems that will ultimately result into network security. So firewalls, as a matter of fact, this is a, a way of countering the problem that you already looked at, right? As I mentioned, firewalls can be hardware such as a router. They can configure a router to be a firewall and maybe implement some access control list, right? Which can also be some sort of software that you need to update with the time, yeah? So firewalls are very, very important. Uh, sorry for that. Uh, as I mentioned, there can be hardware software. Some routers come with firewall functionality. We also have uh, various operating system that come with firewalls. I believe the operating system that you have, normally it tells you if your firewall is on or off. Uh, use Windows, so Windows uh, have that, right? Initially they didn't have, but nowadays they have. So firewall is very important. So it kind of creates some kind of demilitarized zone. The military zone is a perimeter that is secured. So we need to set some kind of firewall. As you can see, there's a firewall to the entry point of the organization, that is intranet, and there's a firewall to the outside of the organization towards the internet. So this one tries to control incoming and outgoing traffic so that we ensure that the employee's data within the internet is secure and whatever gets out also is blocked. So that's how firewalls work. We are going to look on how to implement a particular firewall. Intrusion detection systems is also another topic that we're going to look at, right? And we are going to have a lab. So I think we are going to uh, use this not, uh, it's not, is a way of monitoring a suspicious activity within the network. We also have the, uh, we have another software there that can be implemented, but I think SNOT is good for learning, right? So this one can give you report. This kind of software can give you report on what is happening. If someone is eavesdropping within your, uh, the network, 
packets. Yeah, if there's a packet that has been compromised, they can always give you an alert and you take action. Yes. So an example here is a server known as Zyrix, uh, which is vulnerable. So you can see, uh, you can use this particular uh, software to detect them and make them uh, or drop those particular packets so that at least uh, they don't get to the a recipient. You see, what normally happens when this particular packet or that is being transmitted, uh, there are a lot of things that happens. If the hacker is interested, they can always change the source or the destination, the source IP address, as you've already seen. Yeah? They can always change so that the recipient has a feeling that this is the legitimate person who sent this particular information. So we need to put the necessary detection systems uh, that are going to help us counter this particular problem. So as you have just seen, uh, from this particular example here, this server has a, okay, there's, a there's an interest in coming out in, uh, there's some interest in coming or in someone getting access to the directory or other file that stores passwords, <laughs> right? So by using some intuition detection system, it was uh, identified that particular line and it was dropped, right? But what if, what if the hacker or a particular person got access to this password file? You understand, what are they going to do with it? So there's another form of attack that uh, is likely to happen if the hacker got access to this a password file. Remember, uh, this is where the Linux uh, users store their, uh, their files, uh, their passwords, right? So what will happen is that the hacker is going to run a dictionary attack on the password, right? So if, for example, they are not encrypted. I, I understand that Linux also has a way of encrypting their passwords, but if they're still using the old way of uh, storing their passwords, if they're still using their old ways of storing their passwords, like using the plain text, then the dictionary attack is likely to occur and all these particular passwords can be compromised. That's why normally you're told, even if you're creating a password, don't rely on the available security system. It's your responsibility to ensure that you have a very strong password, right? Like alphanumeric, for, it, for example. So this one, even if it's not encrypted, at least it's going to give them uh, some problems into uh, cracking. We also have another form of uh, attack or other way of uh, a security breach that you can always uh, counter, like denial of service. This is an attack uh, to the availability of resources, right? So they, are, they come in different forms. Some will ensure that they send a lot of, uh, uh, for example, a lot of packets to a given destination a system just to render it useless by overloading it, for example. Yeah. So we have different forms of attack, yeah. uh, like the SYM flooding, yeah. a synchronization kind of flooding. This one is whereby it uses the TCP uh, protocol yeah, to flood. I just send, uh, for example, when you're broadcasting, if a user is broad over or a system is broadcasting, yeah, so it broadcasts until it floods the entire uh, line of communication for that matter. Of course, SMAF is also another common way. SMAF is almost similar in flooding, 
So it ensures that all destination recipients get the wrong at the wrong values, right? Or the wrong packets until it regenerates a different key that the uh, the hacker is looking for. We also have other smaller distributed attacks that we're going to look at. These are just to name but few, but we have a very many uh, examples of DOS. Uh, remember also we have a distributed, I think I've mentioned, yeah, distributed data that happen across multiple uh, networks, right? So, a synchronization is actually the ability of a, of a network to send uh, different packets to the destination or bogus source address uh, with an intention of ensuring that the end system offers uh, or offers a, a different key from the one that was encrypted so that the, the hacker or the attacker can be able to use that uh, other uh, key. So the synchronization of packets is something that uh, provides this denial of service attack. As I mentioned, it uses uh, the TCP most of the time, right? So ideally within our servers, mm -hmm. to counter this problem, uh, we need to install or have the cookies. Cookies is a small file that often regenerates itself to achieve a particular objective. So the cookies here can determine the bad packets and the good packets. So if it can always regenerate to clear the bad packets so that at least uh, the TCP can as well transmit or send uh, the well-defined packets over time. So it can always regenerate itself. This one can be installed or created within our servers just to monitor uh, any bad packets and uh, regenerate the best packet. So there's a diagram here, uh, also providing an example of show us how this particular person is overwhelmed. She can't, she can't use the, the system because of a smurf attack. Right, so SMAF is more or less the same as the SYM, uh, but ideally this one is about broadcasting a lot of uh, packets, right, to different addresses, right. Uh, if this one happens, it's going to overwhelm the response. And that's why you find that uh, maybe the server is not responding in time uh, based on the requests from the client, uh, uh, client side. So users will complain, uh, start complaining. Ah, this uh, printer is slow. Uh, this particular, uh, this particular web page or uh, web page cannot be found. So Smurf has a way. Uh, it has a way of, uh, Ideally, Smurf could be some kind of malicious software. So it has a way of uh, a tricking or stealing the server's IP address yeah? and sending, redirecting, right? Redirecting a lot of uh, clans to it, right? Until it is overwhelmed. So you can see this, uh, uh, this kind of uh, diagram shows us how the victim has been overwhelmed. It could be a server. A printer server, or it could be a web server, right? So inter internet control protocols, these ones can also, or we have the internet a communication a protocols that can always help these particular perpetrators to find or get the right uh, IP addresses. So what we need to do is to reinforce these particular protocols uh, so that whenever communication is happening within the network. We use only the secure protocols. And I think that one we are going to cover with time. The dangerous angle of denial of service is when it is distributed. You can imagine 
the denial of service that is happening within a particular network is replicated in several uh, networks. So that means if an organization is running eight plus branches, if it's this particular denial of service attack is replicated or distributed, yeah, so it's going to cause more harm, right? So we this one can be used uh, by other malicious software such as Trojan and so on, so that it replicates this particular form of attack, right? So distributed denial of service attack also can be based on this malicious uh, software. We also have the TCP attack. I think this one we have already mentioned time and time again. It is the main protocol that is used to transmit packets, right? So when TCP, actually, if you understand how TCP uh, communicates, we're going to look at how communication happens in the TCP. I remember there's some form of uh, handshake that happens between the sending and the uh, receiving machine when TCP needs to communicate. So it needs to create some handshake, needs to do some windowing. When a packet is being transmitted by the TCP, it normally provides some information such as the header information. It provides the source addresses. It provides the destination. So it's, very, it's a vulnerable protocol that hackers normally target a lot. And they can always interfere or change these particular source addresses or the destination address. You can imagine you are expecting to receive maybe something from a particular network. Yes, but it comes from a different network. Yeah, but as an end user, you'll, you'll not really realize that until uh, some harm is, uh, uh, some harm happens. So solution here is to use better authentication methods, as you've seen. Encryption of this data is very, very uh, important. We have different protocols that are linked to the TCP because we have the IP that carries the addresses. I hope you know that. And we also have the HTTP that carries the web information. So different protocols uh, uses the TCP connection, right? So they are often targeted. So if these protocols that reside within TCP are not secure, like for example, if you start using HTTP, uh, we know HTTP is not secure. So we need to have a secure port. So we need to have HTTPS to prevent or stop these TCP attacks, right? So if a hacker learns about a particular a port or rather a connection that is not secure, it's going to hijack, yeah? Now take an example of a, an organization that uses, uh, a, for example, um, simple mail transfer protocol within their server. So this simple mail transfer protocol, if it doesn't use, use the right a port, right, port number, then chances are most hackers will hijack the communication. So you'll find that there are some kind of emails that get into the, uh, to the organization from unknown people asking for various information. Of course, also when you're downloading items, you have to use the secure file transfer protocol. So all these are forms of TCP attacks, right? And I think we are going to be looking at these protocols as uh, with the time. Now there's a diagram here showing uh, who, are, who are these. There's Alice, I believe Alice is on the left. Uh, Bob is on the on the right, and then we have Mr. Big Ears <laughs> at the center. Yeah. So the two people, Bob and Alice are the ones who need to establish TCP connection. So we'll have some form of attack from this big ear. So it's going to intercept the packets and understand what they are, are communicating. Yeah. 
So you can see that is a breach of uh, confidentiality interception as I've already looked. Yeah. So you can see, first, Mr. Big Gears must drop off all of Alice's packets, right? So once it has secured, it has understood the communication channel, the it protocols and everything, it has to change. That's why it's dropping. So the question is why? Why? Who can tell us why? Maybe a good uh, attempt. I know I'm talking a lot because of time. Why do you think that the opponent or the intruder must make some changes so that the recipient doesn't get to know who they any attempt? Alan, why do you think that the man in the middle, that is Mr. Big Ears, what is the essence of dropping? Uh, I'm not understanding quite clearly the question, so. Okay. Okay, of course the question is here, you can just read. The, the thing is, when TP, a TCP is hijacked, the end user or the end machine sorry for that, the end machine or the end user, normally they have the handshake. The handshake means that Alice had already established the communication with who? With the Bob. I think it was the Bob, right? So if the big ears happened to, uh, happened to hijack this particular conversation, they need to ensure that they create another key so that this particular end recipient cannot determine that this particular TCP or communication channel has been hijacked. Remember TCP is a very secure protocol. We have the brother to TCP, which is UDP. UDP doesn't care, yeah? but TCP will always care because it will offer an acknowledgement back, right? So for, for this particular, big year to be able to communicate successfully the end a recipient, they need to create another key. Maybe let's proceed with this. Believe there's a... So they need to create another key, right? With Alice, right? So that uh, this particular communication is not altered, right? And that's how hijacking of this particular uh, communication happens. So the big years can now have a chance of sending uh, their malicious code, right? So these types of TCP attacks are so dangerous. Um, and we need to actually uh, prevent them. So why are they dangerous? Of course, you have seen confidentiality of the data is compromised. The web server for this matter cannot be able to communicate with the client, which is the web, a trusting web client. And of course, integrity of the data that is being transmitted also can be compromised. So they are very, very dangerous. So how do we counter this? We need to have a secure IP protocol, right? So if we have an IP security protocol, then we can always be rest assured that there's right authentication so that the big years cannot be, pretend to be Alice. We can also offer encryption, right? Using the IP security. So these forms of uh, attacks, we're going to look at them in detail and more so how to handle them. Uh, packet sniffing is another one. Uh, packet sniffing often starts with the local area network, right? And we need to understand how Ethernet works. So I don't know if you still recall how 
communication happens within a local area network. What we refer, what we talk about collisions, uh, carrier sense, multiple access, and collision detection. So here's where communication happens randomly, right? So the other is that uh, when a computer wants to communicate, it broadcasts, yeah, its uh, IP, uh, its MAC addresses, so that any other computer can get them within the uh, within this particular uh, network. So what happens if the wrong computer gets this broadcasted message, right? So it can always use this for uh, or compromise this particular uh, communication. So packet sniffing not only works within the internet work and networks, packet sniffing also happens within the uh, token ring networks, also within the wireless uh, network. So it relies on broadcast, yeah, broadcasting where you just throw away a various information within the network, hoping that everyone is going to find that. Uh, so it could be that there, there's an hacker planted within that particular network that can always uh, use uh, that kind of information. So of course we, by sniffing the packets, the hacker can uh, get confidential information such as passwords. And of course, uh, even the IP addresses for that particular network is a, a sensitive data, right? Because you remember, just imagine I know the kind of IP addresses, so I can always try them out. This one goes to the, uh, maybe finance, computer, this one goes to the HR. So how can we protect ourselves? By using the protocols that I've mentioned, we can use the secure socket, a secure a shell, we can use uh, the secure socket layer of our HTTP. We can download our files and upload them using the secure FTP. How else can we protect ourselves from packet sniff? So just check on any available uh, protocol that is not secure and create some security on top of it uh, to avoid this kind of packing, uh, packet sniff. So ideally, IP sec security is the way to go to ensure that whatever is being sent across the sender and the and the receiver is not compromised in terms of its confidentiality and so on. Now the other problem as we have already looked at are ourselves. Yeah? So we can be manipulated, we can be bribed into causing our problems with the network. Some people get fired, then you start revenging. <laughs> yeah. So these are also ways of, uh, these are problems that you can always face, yeah? So getting solutions to this is very hard, but of course uh, we can work around different ways. <laughs> so if, uh, for example, uh, Mark, you are given the role of network admin, and you're not well paid. So we can just decide to increase your salary so that you don't compromise. I <laughs> uh, don't com compromise the system. And of course, we can offer free education, right? Just to tell them how bad the situation can be if you don't adhere to the right policy. And any other kind of solution that you can think of uh, that can stop this particular problem. So, now we have uh, other ways, uh, especially the malwares that call, can always cause harm, right, uh, to our systems and the countermeasures. Uh, of course, we have the ransomware, right? Uh, ransomware, these are way of cyber criminals demanding some aid. Yeah? They can always encrypt your system until you release them. We have rootkit. These are software-based attacks. They are, they are software-based attacks that can be used within a network to compromise its security. All 
Uh -huh. Sorry for that. And of course, uh, rootkit is a uh, is a back. It's kind of a using admin privileges. Yeah. So you are two administrators within a server. So today you do something. Tomorrow you realize that someone has done something else. Right. Like uh, offer a particular person within the organization some privileges that was not there. So that will be a rootkit attack. Backdoor viruses or remote access. Uh, Trojans, these ones are also ways that hackers can use to interfere with our network. We have key loggers, eavesdropping, yeah. Uh, we also have spoofing, right? We have social engineering, you already mentioned them. We have phishing farming. So these are some of uh, the various police attacks. Our I won't really spend a lot of time because there are very many. So kindly just uh, I do some research on a number of them, right? And how these particular attacks can be carried out and how we can stop them. Right? I've just mentioned them, but I haven't mentioned how we can counter them. So it could be very important that you also understand how to counter these uh, forms of attack. Right now, what are some of the consequences of breaching the network? Of course, we can lose our valuable clients. Right, we have just looked at an example of a bank. Right, so customers may withdraw their investment or money. Another consequence could be legal suits. Right, a firm or an organization can sue, like, for example, if it's a hospital and maybe the patient's information leaks. Yeah, they can sue the hospital. Financial loss can also be realized. I mean, it's common sense. If you have uh, customers walking away from you and these frequent legal suits, then you lose money. We also have laws of partnership. So if you had some partners, they may work, uh, might walk away. Government can also withdraw their permits and licenses. If they find that your organization is not having the right security controls, you can also lose your business to competitors, yeah, or strate uh, strategies, everything, right? And of course, you can have some soiled reputation, right? And this one cannot work well with your future business partners and even clients. Also, you have potential loss of this particular. You can lose your data. The network, if compromised, people can start using your computer resources in a bad way. Of course, your reputation loss. And the most common one is the identity theft. So you can realize in an organization, we have stolen all the critical data about the employees. We can use them to steal their money from the bank to do businesses on their behalf and so on and so forth. So I know uh, I've gone a little bit faster towards the end, but those are just uh, some form of attacks that can always uh, go through and do some further research because we have a lot of software based attacks uh, that you can always uh, learn on your own. So, uh, allow me to stop there unless you have a question. I uh, think I'll stop there. Any question? Anything 